What is up y'all, KRC Pinto here, and today I want to talk about Venom. Venom is an assassin in the world of Guilty Gear. His weapon of choice? Well, it's uh, a billiard stick and some balls. I know what you're thinking, and yes, that is indeed cool as hell. Oh, that's so cool! Venom's pool wall mechanics allow him to play an oppressive game, both up close and at full screen. But manipulating the balls can be a bit tricky to learn. So today we'll be going over Venom's ball set moves, how to manipulate the balls, and when to make use of them. If you find this guide helpful, throw it a like and be sure to sub the channel for more Guilty Gear content. Venom has a few different ways to get his pool balls on the screen. Any of the following moves will allow him pool balls to work with in one way or another, so be sure to familiarize yourself with the full move set. First up is Venom's appropriately titled Ball Set. 214 and any button will give Venom a pool ball in a position that depends on the button he uses. More on that later. Venom can set one ball per button, buttons being punch, kick, slash, heavy slash, and dust, with a maximum of five balls on screen total. The balls will fade after a certain amount of time, so be sure to make use of them while you can. This can also be done in the air. Dubious Curve. Dubious Curve is attached to Venom's reverse DP motion and any of the buttons, similar to Ball Set. This move hits the enemy for a knockdown while also placing a ball on the screen in the same position as Ball Set would. One distinction is that if Dubious Curve connects, the ball will be an electric ball. Electric balls have more hits attached and can lock down opponents for longer and do chip damage. This makes Dubious Curve Venom's bread and butter combo ender, giving him very strong ball OP. If Dubious Curve whiffs or is blocked, Venom will still set a regular pool ball, it just will not be electric. In addition to these moves, Venom also has two charge moves. Stinger Aim is attached to holding four, and then six and slash, or heavy slash, and launches the ball straight forward without setting anything. He simply hits the ball forward. Carcass Raid is very similar, charging two into eight slash, or heavy slash, to launch a ball at the ground, which then bounces up. These two moves have some unique properties in that they can be charged for a bigger, more powerful ball. All you do is hold the execution input. So six and slash, or six and heavy slash, eight and slash, eight and heavy slash. You get the picture. They also have force breaks using the dust button, which rebound off walls and can lead to some serious shenanigans, which we'll touch on later. The force break versions can also be charged, so then you have a big electric thing bouncing off the walls. It's pretty ridiculous. Finally, Venom's 632146 Super places five electric balls on the screen. This can be a powerful tool when used properly. It's also important to note that the balls will take formation depending on the button you use for the Super. So again, this move is attached to every single button that you could possibly use. So now let's talk about balls, positions, and formations. When you use your moves to get balls on the screen, the button you press determines where they will go. Your punch ball will settle directly in front of Venom, kick will be in front and a bit above, slash will be in front around shin height, heavy slash will go further away around the enemy's head level from the start position, and Dust will be at Venom's feet, low enough that only his 2k can hit it. These positions apply to balls placed with both ball set and dubious curve, so keep this in mind when you're setting up. When you start setting multiple balls, which happens often since ball set cancels into itself, the balls will take a formation based on the last ball you set. For example, if you have your kick slash heavy slash and dust balls on the screen, and you do the punch ball last, punch will go to its normal set spot, but the other four balls will create a formation around it. It's important to know these formations and plan your ball sets accordingly. You always want to set the ball with your preferred formation last. This also applies for any number of balls, 
So whether you have two or five balls on the screen, you'll end up in the formation of your last set. On top of that, this also applies when you use dubious curve, as any on-screen balls will form around the ball set using that move. The two first ball positions you need to master as a beginner are punch and kick. The punch ball is incredibly simple. It's in the perfect position for you to hit a variety of ways and gives you a lot of options. Work on mastering dropping the punch ball and hitting it with 5P, which causes it to move forward slowly, allowing Venom to follow behind in classic fireball fashion. You can also get tricky by hitting it again while it's in motion to change its direction and or momentum, making it a great approach tool. Kickball is your go-to Oki tool. Using dubious curve to set the K-ball on knockdown allows you to then jump kick to force a block on wake up. This works with a normal ball, but it is much stronger with an electric ball since those have more hits attached to them. When you're feeling comfortable doing this, you can start going for a dash jump jump kick. This will give you more momentum in your jump and allow you to cross up while the ball is hitting for some really tricky Oki setups. Now let's talk about moving the balls around the screen. Once balls are on screen, you can send them around with your different normals. Using different normals causes different speeds and angles. For example, 5P will hit a ball straight and slow. Hitting a ball with 5S will go straight and a good bit faster, and 5D will turn your ball into a supersonic missile of death. Other moves like 6K or 6P will give you different angles, allowing you to anti-air or interrupt approaches. It takes a long time to master what every single button does in every single situation, but the beauty of playing Venom is that you have a ton of options and you can mix them up to keep enemies guessing. Balls can also change direction and momentum when they come into contact with each other, just like in normal billiards. This allows you to cover multiple angles and is the main purpose of learning the different set formations. For example, if you have all five balls in the P or D formations, you can create a projectile wall that stops most approaches. You can also change momentums to fake opponents out. An example would be following a slow P ball and then hitting it again to make it faster or to change its direction to anti-air. Stinger Aim and Carcass Raid can also be used to move balls around, but they also have a secret bonus. The Force Break versions of these moves rebound around the screen, and they transfer this property into balls they impact. Using this, you can create some seriously devious situations, and you can also set balls while the charged balls bounce around to keep the nonsense coming. Feel free to get creative here. If you're not using the Force Break versions and just the regular Stinger Aim and Carcass Raid, just making contact will be treated the same way as any other ball hitting any other ball. Okay, so now we know what to do with the balls, but when should you actually set them? Well, the easy answer is uh, when you can. In the primary situation, you'll be able to is while you have an opponent knocked down. The most crucial setup to learn is ending your combos with the K version of Dubious Curve. This will give you a knockdown and an electric ball in the K position for Oki, like we talked about earlier. Now you're threatening Oki, and you have time to decide whether to follow through or to get tricky. If you forget the Dubious Curve or you fail the input, you can always do a regular ball set during a knockdown as well. You will have time. While doing a ball set will give you a normal K-ball OP, which is a strong option, if you're not confident in the baseball set, or they seem prepared to deal with your ball on wake up, you can always change things up and charge a stinger aim while they're on the ground. Just remember to start holding forward during your knockdown move, and you should have that charge by the time you can use stinger. From there, you can push 6S or heavy slash and hold that so the ball charges up. They'll have to deal with your charged up ball and wake up, and then you can mix them from there. Your other option is to set balls from full screen. While not always wise against projectile heavy characters, you can take advantage of space between you and the enemy to set balls. If they give you space, use it to get balls out and start preventing approaches with them. Walling out non-zoners this way can create some serious frustration for opponents, so long as you're smart about the way you use your balls. If you get predictable, they'll work around them. 
A great example is to use various speeds of the key ball to force jump approaches and then counter with an anti-air and combo from there. So those are the basics of Venom's pool balls. This mechanic is both complex and flexible, but it's what allows Venom to play an extremely oppressive game when used correctly and creatively. Put in some time and you'll be frustrating opponents in no time. It's honestly, it can get really, really ridiculous when you know what you're doing. If you found this guide helpful and informative, let me know in the comments and be sure to like and sub for more Guilty Gear content. Until next time, y'all.